If you're anything like us, you might be wondering if BMW hasn't lost the plot lately. The company who built its reputation on a bedrock of fun rear-wheel drive saloons has been pushing four-wheel drive, built a 40 grand carbon fiber electric city car, and has just announced a front-wheel drive three-cylinder MPV. Well, it turns out BMW still makes a car for people like us. In fact, it's just built a new one. This is it. It's the M235i and it is brilliant. First, let's deal with this badge. The 2 Series is effectively a replacement for the old 1 Series Coupe. It's spun off the 1 Series hatch, but it gets a 2 Series name to bring it into line with BMW's new model policy. Then there's the M bit. That means it's an M performance model, not quite a full-blown M car. There'll be a proper M2 along in a year or so. But it's definitely a cut above your usual M Sport product. You get four pot calipers at the front, proper upgraded suspension, and this is the only two series to come with more than four cylinders. The engines are three litre straight six, one turbo, 322 brake horsepower, 332 pounds for the torque. And those are some big numbers because at 34 grand, this car sits in a segment dominated mostly by front wheel drive cars, four cylinders, and usually no more than 280 horsepower. Apart from the tiniest little bit of turbo lag, you barely know it was turbocharged at all. It feels like more like you've got a natural aspirate engine, a big five litre V8 up front. In terms of performance, BMW says this thing will do 0 to 62 in 4.8 seconds when equipped with the ZF8 speed auto. That's an option. Even with the six speed manual we've got here, it'll do it in five dead. That's right, a modern performance car that still comes with a manual gearbox. And by the middle of the year, you'll be able to order a limited slip diff, which will make it more fun and more controllable when you want to indulge in a bit of ESP off sideways action. You get 18 inch wheels as standard, whether you like it or not, there's no option to upgrade. They look a bit apologetic in the arches really, a bit weedy, but they're shod with some Michelin Pilot Supersport rubber, which is actually really sticky, certainly in the dry, has no trouble whatsoever dealing with the horsepower. 322, pretty much delivered straight to the ground in all weathers. The chassis helps as well too. This is a really well-sorted rear-wheel drive car. You can have adaptive dampers if you want as an option, but we can't really see the need. The passive dampers we've got here are great. The ride is so much better than in the old 1M, yet the body control is really good too. The steering could do with just a little bit more feel to really key you into the surface, but it's not bad by any means. It's quick, it's responsive, and the weighting's really nice as well. Apart from this engine, where the 2 Series really scores against its rivals, cars like the TT, Peugeot's RCZR, is in practicality stakes. This is actually a pretty usable car. They haven't got any back seats to speak of at all. This thing's got four proper seats, great visibility, decent boot, where it falls down combat to those cars is, well, you only have to look at it, don't you? Hardly what you'd call handsome. And while we know BMW is keeping its powder dry for a full-blown M2, this M performance pack simply doesn't add enough visual drama. When even the Koreans are building sexier cars, you know it's time to make some personnel changes in the design department. But frankly, it could look like an Austin Allegro for all we care, because the M235i proves that the Germans haven't forgotten people like us or how to make the kind of simple, fun-to-drive machines that made us love that blue and white propeller in the first place.